What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Tactical Tuesday. And I just want to say thank you guys so much for all the love and support thus far. Uh, you guys have been huge on TikTok. Uh, our Instagram is growing. We've got over 100 subscribers on YouTube. I think we're at 120 now, which is a huge bump up. Um, yeah, we're on our way to 1,000 there, so that's our next goal. With that said, uh, let's uh, dive into today's topic. Um, it's going to be just the six general principles of clearing a house or a building, right? So I really wanted to cover, just keep covering these kind of like principle stuff. And again, this is a very broad spectrum, uh, general stuff just to think about as you kind of move into having to use those types of tactics. But before we get too much further, I would like to say a special thank you to Rain City Tactical for being a huge sponsor of this channel. If you guys are in the Kent area of Washington, please go over to Rain City Shooting Center. They've got a full gun range, an awesome membership for a full year. Um, they sell tactical gear. They've got a full gun shop. Uh, we hold classes there. And yeah, great stuff, great guys. Go check them out. Now let's dive into it. So these six general principles of clearing a house. So the very first one is going to be clearing top down, right? So any chance you get moving into having to clear a building or a house or whatever the case is, if there's multiple stories, you always want to clear top down if possible. Now that's not always possible. There's not always a stairwell or a ladder well or the ability to go roof to roof or, you know, uh, window to window. There's so many different ways to attain top down. But again, it's still just, it's not always there, right? So if you can clear top down, clear top down. And the two main purposes for that are, one, if there are multiple levels, stairwells are quite possibly like the, one of the most dangerous parts about the CQB and mount environment, right? So if you have the opportunity to push down a stairwell instead of having to go up a stairwell, that's a plus. Uh, the other thing is, is kind of like a mentality issue too, right? So like, when you corner a, a, a when you put a dog in the corner, right? They got nowhere to go but to fight, right? But if you clear top down, right, and you potentially give whoever's inside that opportunity to leave the building, right? Like they they know that they at least they think they can run out, then the odds of them scrambling to leave and and, and move out of the building is 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 greater. Now, is that going to happen for sure? No, but it is part of part of why we try to do clear top down um but mostly stairwells <laughs> mostly it's stairwells right mostly it's it's having to deal with that uh that portion of the building it's just it's it, again it's just always a nightmare so clear top down now number two when you're entering when you're making entry right you always want to secure a foothold right so that you want to make sure that once you get in you secure you secure that first room or hard point beyond the entryway. So that first uh, foothold um, is going to allow you to assess what's going on inside the building. It might uh, allow you to determine more features about the building. And hopefully you can, if it's, again, this is a, if it's a multi-level building, you will be able to locate a stairwell that might lead you to the upstairs that allows you to clear top down. You know, I mean, not always, sometimes, but sometimes it's a possibility. So if you can, once you get in and clear top down, then clear top down. But going back to that foothold. So like once you're inside, you've got your foothold and you can assess the rest of the building. That foothold is important because you want to make sure that there's a, a, a clear area, whether it be like, even if it's as you go in, it's just a, an, an open room off to the right. It doesn't necessarily have its own doorway, but you want like a, a basically that foothold becomes your casualty collection point, right? So if as you're going through the rest of the building or your house, you start taking casualties or whatever you need to like take a step back or you need to get guys out of the line of fire or out of the fight, then you have a closed off cleared space to put them at that's you know still inside cover because you don't want to pull them outside of the building. You don't want to start taking casualties out into the street because you don't know what's out there, right? So you want to secure that foothold and make sure you have a solid place to um, conduct kind of like smaller operational stuff from inside of that building. So that, that can be like your... Kind of imagine it kind of like a mini CCP, sort of. You know what I mean? Like, well, anyway. Yeah, so that's number two. Um, now, number three, uh, avoid silhouetting. This is huge. Um, and, it, and it ties into so many different parts of clearing a building. And again, these are, these are six general principles. These are not, these, this does not cover the end-all, everything, be-all 
of what it takes to clear a house, clear rooms, things like that. There are so many different aspects to that. These are just six general principles. So avoid silhouetting. What that means is you want to make sure that your silhouette, your person, who you are, your, your embodiment, right, is as small of a target and as limited of a target as possible. So as I'm passing down hallways, in front of windows, in front of doors, through doorways, uh, you know, we, we want to make sure that that silhouette, that image of us is as compact and small as possible. We don't want to make ourselves known. We don't want to, uh, you know, be easily spotted kind of like in people's point of view. We don't want to, you know, if we can move under windows, we'll move under windows. If we want, you know, like we want to avoid giving the enemy as many opportunities to spot us and engage with us as possible. Like we want to control that part of the scenario if possible. So, uh, and it has to do with, even when you're just, uh, and I'm going to go into a little bit, but like in, in, in the doorway, right, when it comes to room clearing, whatnot, like you want to engage with your eyes and your weapon first. You want to avoid silhouetting. You want to lean into rooms. You don't want to um, just be putting your whole body out there and exposed to take engagements, right? You want to like, and I know that, uh, you know, most houses, most rooms, most buildings do not have like concrete walls where like, you're, where the walls are actually covered. Most of it's just concealment, right? Most bolts are going through most walls. But it is just that a tiny amount more of of concealment that can allow you to have the upper hand or the advantage, right? So avoid silhouetting. Number four, number four. Use your utility. I can't, I can't stress this enough. Use your utility. Now, what we mean by utility is your flashbangs, your hand grenades, your smoke grenades, your decoy grenades. Anything that you can use to give you, if you have it on you, to give you the advantage into clearing a building, clearing a room, drones, whatever the case is, right? If you have something you can use, right? If it's nighttime, your nods, your uh, flashlights, IR lights, IR, you know, lasers, whatever you have in your in your in your toolbox, use it. Do not move into that into that area, not having used those. Don't forget that you have them. Again, just make sure they're used because that's that could be a huge advantage on your side. And CQB amount uh, clearing rooms and clearing houses is already like the, the most dangerous thing you can do really. <laughs> like it, it is extremely dangerous. And so you have to use your utility. You cannot, you're just fucking yourself and your friendlies. If you go to enter a room and realize, Oh man, I had this extra flashbang right here. Like it's something to give you the advantage. So always take that advantage. Use your utility. All right. Number five, number five, Get in fast and safe, right? Obviously, we want to move as quickly as possible because it's a very chaotic environment, CQB and Mount is, especially with it being like you have this, three, th this 360 spherical threat, like you have highs and lows, and it's, it's just insane, right? So like we want to make sure, especially if we're out in the street and we're like making, we're trying to get into the, into the building and out, out off the, you know, off of the... Uh, the street and stuff, like you want to get in fast. Um, but we cannot sacrifice security for that either, right? Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. We've all heard that a million times. I've actually heard it messed up a bunch recently for some reason online, but slow is smooth, smooth is fast. We need to be calculated. We need to make sure that as we're making entry into the house or the building that we are being as safe as possible because... Just going in fast, just fucking moving all high speed, low drag, and blah, blah, blah. Like, it's not always the safest, right? Like, you, yes, the element of surprise is, is important sometimes, but you have to move safely. You have to clear entryways in a way that makes sense. Again, and we've mentioned this a lot, your purpose. Understanding your purpose, understanding the situation is really going to help you understand like how you should be like how fast you should be moving. Right. Always keep that in mind. It's, it's good because it's a very, very huge piece to this. So 
That's number five. Lastly, number six, avoid patterns. Now, avoiding patterns is crucial to, to, to larger units and larger scale conflict, typically. Um, mostly because, uh, you know, avoiding patterns is, is like if you have an enemy that's like, that's, uh, you know, watching you move and they're, and they're getting details about how you guys do stuff and whatever, like, like, oh, well, if they, if they, if you always clear a building like this or always clear a room like this or always, you know, go through your mount military operations on urban train, if you have a specific, you know, a calculated specific way that you always take down a block or whatever the case is, uh, you know, then, then those things are going to get noticed. You know what I mean? So you're going to start having, seeing counter tactics to the way that you move and the way that you operate within those environments. So avoiding patterns allows you to kind of keep the enemy on their toes, right? Now, again, going back to purpose, this may not be as relevant um, to situations where, that most people might find themselves in. Right, so again, my thought processes on, on this and tactics-wise, what I like to teach um, is not the direct action, super sexy, super cool. I'm a badass. Look at me, shit. It's things that are actually going to keep you alive, that are going to like help you um, be better prepared for like that shit hits the fan scenario where like someone's broken into your house or there's some sort of you know, internal collapse happening or whatever the case is, right? Like that shit is the fan scenario for you individually. Like I want you guys to understand how to operate in that mindset, right? Or where things don't, where the normal standard like rules and laws don't really apply anymore. Like how do you operate in those types of environments, right? So now avoiding patterns could still be something that you could pay attention to, right? And, and it depends on the scenario, but Really, that's what it's about. It's about changing up, even if it's just slight SOP stuff, so that people that are watching you potentially aren't catching on to the way you're doing things, and you can still have that that element of surprise potentially, right? So, um, it also, I'll add one more thing. So, another reason to kind of avoid patterns. Um, this is more of a, a mental thing than anything is if you go in doing the same thing every time, um, and while you can get really good at that one thing, it's super repetitious. So, like, you, if you have all this repetition going in, like, there are times when it, be, when it can become monotonous, right? So, like, you're just, like, you're almost going through the steps too, too much. You know what I mean? Like, having that, that offset allows for your brain to kind of, like, switch gears and, like, keep you alert, right? So... Um, that's basically it for that. Those are the six general principles of clearing a house or clearing a building. Again, there are six general principles. There are tons of other stuff we could go into. So before you guys lash out at me in the comments saying, oh, you didn't cover this or cover that. There, I know there are plenty, there is so much to see, give you amount that this couldn't pause. This video couldn't possibly touch at all. So thank you guys. I hope that these help. I hope that I gave you guys some insight and some ideas to think about. Um, especially as you guys are working with like your teams, whether it be a two man team or your three, four or five, whatever you guys are lucky enough to have around, right? Develop that tribe. Um, keep training. I will see you guys on Wednesday for weapons Wednesday for all those that shot show. I wish I could have been out there with you guys next year. I will be, um, I appreciate you guys and yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow as always stay loose battle on. And if you bitch in your heart, it'll show.